What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Off the Couch Boxing. I'm your host, Reckless Rex Ruger, along with the Alexis Arguello puppet. As you can see, I'm spruced up tonight for an evening's worth of uh, heavyweight interviews. Flying solo tonight, but am I ever really solo? I mean, come on. I have a living legend in puppet form right here. One of my favorite fighters of all time. El Flaco Explosivo, Alexis Arguello. And we got a great guest. I have two great guests tonight. Well, I'm recording one right now, but at the time of this recording, there was some kick-ass boxing going on. That much I do know. Jose Ramirez in action tonight. It's April 27th. My guest should be coming in here. Any minute, and I am excited. Uh, we are one week removed, of course, from the great Ryan Garcia upset. May maybe might go down as one of the greatest upsets of all time. Beating Devin Haney, crazy, crazy. And uh, we got uh, a summer's worth of great fights coming up. Great fights. Um, Starting with, uh, oh, geez, what's coming up? We're going to see uh, Tank and Frank. We're going to see Fury and Usyk. June, we're going to see Beater, Biev, and Bivol. Come on. It's going to be uh, a star-studded summer. We're going to see uh, David Benavidez moving up to light heavyweight. He's uh, co-headlining that amazing event with uh, the Tank and Frank uh, card. And our guest is here right now. Let's get him in here. I'm excited. You should be excited. And you will be. You will be. And when we get him in here, activate his camera and his microphone. We will get him in here. I believe he's already in here. Where is he? Chris! Hey, how are you? Good to see you, man. Hey, I, first of all, I, I want full credit here because I would like you to know, man, that I have spruced up tonight and gone uh, very stylish tonight in a suit jacket and hat because after my interview with you, I am interviewing Pinklin Thomas. Oh, uh, okay. You know, who has a, who has very much a flair for, pa uh, for uh, fashion himself, so I'm figuring he would appreciate that. Yes, he will. You look good. Thank you. And, uh, and, and earlier today, uh, uh, we talked to uh, a heavyweight that you probably remember, Kirk Johnson. Kirk, oh, yeah. Kirk Great good guy. Heavyweight. Oh, amazing conversation with him, man. Amazing conversation with him. And, yeah, and, and of course, you. It's been a heavyweight day today. I know. Hey, you got the heavyweight well, two champs and a number one contender. The trifecta. I've hit the trifecta today. So, so uh, listen, first of all, I want to ask you, because the last time I talked to you, uh, uh, you had slimmed down to uh, around middleweight, and you were wanting to make a comeback of your own and, and get some fights. Now, now one guy that, uh, that that I've had on our show that I keep in contact with is Ike Mayabuchi, a former opponent of yours. Now, he's going through a frustrating time because he is over 50 years old and himself is trying to find fights. You, you know, How do you navigate those waters when you're at, uh, uh, when you're at your your age and wanting to still fight. Wait, I didn't hear you. What was the question? Uh, you know, Rick is also trying to get a fight. He's over 50 years old. You know, uh, how do you navigate those waters like when you're that age? Is it tough to get promoters? Is it tough to get fights? Yeah, it's pretty tough because you gotta you gotta pass the physical. You know, yeah. you want you want to take the physical and then you know promoters look at you like oh you're too old, you know, liability, yeah. whatever. But I, I'm thinking I feel like a young kid, so yeah. you know, let us fight, man. See what see what happens. I think you know it, it, we could do things above fifty that impossible. I know I can. And what's the reason, though? Like, you know, look, look, you know I, I, in, in other words, what's the obstacle? You, you know, uh, is it fighting promoters? Is it fighting people that want to see guys that are of an older age fight? I think it's, you know, promoters willing to uh, put us on, you know, and not, you know, it's a risk to them probably thinking, like, if you're over 50, you're old. Like, we're a new era. It's, you know, it's we got young 
we feel young at this age. So we, and most of the 50 year olds, if they doing it, they feel like they can really do it. So yeah, yeah, it's not a, it's not a, a, a thing where, especially for me, where I'm thinking about getting hurt or risking my life and, right. and doing it. No, that's crazy. I won't do it. And you think the only way that you, you, you think the only way that it's attainable is like the is like going like the route Mike Tyson is taking, like fighting one of these YouTube type fights where he's obviously going to be fighting Jake Paul. Yeah, I mean that that that's a great route, but you know I want to go that route. I want to fight these young younger guys early, yeah. you know, and build my way up to a major fight. Like I want to win a world title. I don't want to. I don't want to be a guy that just come back and box and say, "Ooh, I came back at fifty-three years old and fight." No, I want and to last it, right? Right. You don't want to just come back and just last, You're right? You know what I mean? You want to come back and accomplish things. Yes, the things I, I need to accomplish after I came back from the Olympics, I didn't get signed, so I didn't get to fight in my true weight, which was middleweight. I right. fought at heavyweight. Now, one thing I have to ask you, uh, uh, obviously we saw quite the surprise, I think, in a lot of people's minds uh, last weekend when we saw Ryan Garcia upset Devin Haney. And obviously, uh, uh, you know, Devin Haney's father, a very polarizing figure. You know what I mean? You had a lot of family members involved in your camp and in your corner. Uh, uh, how, how do you balance that? And can family members, you know, st uh, step over a, a certain boundary and do too much talking for a fighter? Wait, what was that last part in here? A family member. Can a family member, uh, you, you know, if you, if, you, if you run the risk of having family, uh, you, you know, in your camp, and obviously you're surrounded by a lot of, uh, of your family, were part of your team, and you didn't have this problem, but can family members overstep a certain boundary and do too much talking for the fighter? Like, obviously, we see Devin Haney's father. Uh, you know, we've seen guys like Tia Fimo's father. Certain guys are very vocal. You didn't seem like you had that problem. No, no, I, we didn't have my, my parents weren't like that. I mean, I've been with them my whole life boxing. We, we don't talk trash. The thing is, they knew there was they wasn't fighting. I'm right. fighting. So right. you talking trash to somebody that and you get them all hyped up. They come to you. You up. talking trash you whoop your son butt. No, <laughs> no yeah. you don't do that. <laughs> Uh, so, so, so uh, as somebody who fought and, and was a heavyweight champion, uh, I bet you know I would be remiss if I didn't have you on here and get some of your uh, opinions. The big Fury Usyk heavyweight uh, unification bout coming up. How do you see that playing out? Oh, good, great fight! I mean, boxing, especially heavyweight, can go either way. You got a smaller heavyweight, which in Usyk, but he's left-handed. Gonna cause a lot of problems for Tyson Fury. Go cause a lot of problems for him because he's not, he's a slippery left hander, slicker, a little faster. Tight Fury is not a humongous puncher. So, right. his tight advantage toward Usyk, I'm thinking, if, if Tyson Fury can keep his height and reach and, and, and distance, yeah, he's going to give him problems. But if not, it's going to be a hard day for him. Yeah. Tight Fury. Saudi Arabia has become the place to go now for fights. Yes. It's love the hot it. spot. Love it. I would love to fight there. That's, that's just one of my favorite spots. I, I want to be on the big show, on the big screen. So I would love to fight there. Uh, so so I, I think I might have asked, uh, uh, you know, I, I like to get heavyweights on here and ask sometimes because, you know, you are, you are considered the biggest guys in boxing or whatever. Who's the guy that hit you the hardest? Do you remember the hardest punch that you took and, 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 and who delivered it? Man, I fight a heavyweight. Coming from middleweight, these guys can punch so hard. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, you know, I could say Vladimir Klitschko, Ika Bayabuchi, big big time punchers. Yeah. But like a guy like Devera, Devera Williamson, man, I had to avoid. Oh my goodness, his punching power was was yeah. off the Punch chart. Sleep. Punch his sleep. And I, <laughs> and I knew him. Prior to, I sparred with him before, so I knew what he really had. So I'm like, I mean, he's 212, 215 pounds, and yeah. he can punch. But a lot of guys, these heavyweights can punch really hard. I was blessed to have good defense. Yeah. Because, you man, I got blown out a lot. 
Are you excited to see Mike Tyson fight Jake Paul? Like, this shouldn't even be a competitive fight, right? Like, Mike looks fantastic. I mean, something's wrong if this doesn't end in, like, a first-round murder for uh, Mike Tyson. This is crazy. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's exciting to me. Mike Tyson, 57 years old. I know. Yeah, I'll be 54, so I feel like we, you know, I know how Mike probably feeling. I can do this. I, I mean, I can do this. This is just a stepping stone to where I really want to go. You know, and, and Mike, you know, has the pop the popularity, so he get these opportunities big time. But, you know, I think it's great for boxing. And props to Jake Paul, who's, who's going to step up and try to fight Mike Tyson. And now, who's the guy currently doing it in the sport right now that you get the most excited to watch? Like, if you find out he's fighting, man, you want to be tuned in. Is there that guy for you right now that, 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 that really gets you electric about the sport? It's... Matchups, man. Uh, whoever, yeah. like, if the top guys fight each other, that's the that's the best thing for boxing to see. Like these guys get to the highest level, and 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 really want to challenge each other and see who's the best. It, it's I love you know all the um you know the the belts you know because some guys wouldn't get a chance, but at the same time when you win the belt, now it's time to see who's the best. There's four champions. Who's yeah. The best? Yeah. And you think that's happening enough or not happening enough? I mean, what was that? Uh, you, you brought up the best fighting the best. Do you feel like that is happening or that that could be happening more? That could be happening more. Yeah. You know, not I enough. know with promoters and money and everything involved. Yeah, but we can get fights. You know, fighters can still get fights done. Let's go. Yeah. Let's fight and see who the best. I agree with you. Now, I, I, I was just talking before you came on and letting the people know that, you know, we got a summer's worth of really exciting fights coming up. Are there any that are coming up in 2024 that you're excited about? I know a lot of people are excited about Buda Bev and, uh, and Bivol. Yes, that's a big one. I mean, yeah. I, I love that fight. I love the matchup. You know, you got this brawler versus, versus a, I mean, a puncher versus a straight boxer, skilled guy. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. You know, it, it's a it's a major one, and I love the matchup. I love the willingness for both of them to be like, okay, yeah, yes, I'll fight him. Ain't no biggie. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't. It seemed like it wasn't no no long negotiation. Uh, I don't want to fight. You know, type guys. No, they seem like they went to the negotiation, got it done, and let's see who the best. That's what I love about about this sport and about the that fight and the weight class um um well I'll fight you. It, it's not a it's not a hesitant. We're gonna see who's the best. Right. And whoever come out the best right there is the best in light heavyweight. Right. The best. Number one. Is it crazy for like uh, uh, you know? Obviously, you know, as you get to a certain age, time is not on your side so much. But like, it, 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 is it is it a crazy idea for Ike Mabuchi to be on there and wanting to call out top heavyweights, or should he not even really set his sights that high? I mean, is that a feasible thing, or should he start you know on a smaller scale? You know, you 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 gonna start on a smaller scale, of course. Yeah, I mean, I, it'd be it'd be wrong for Ike to go right jump in and try to fight the the top guys. No, fight a few fights. Yeah, get get warmed up in this division where it's the guys are taller, they're bigger, they're yeah. they're you know it's a big division. So you get used to it, then get into the rhythm of okay, now I feel very comfortable. I can I can compete in this division, which I think he can. So you know, take take a Take a small route. You know, the thing is, we're older. Yeah. Let's get used to it. For me, I feel I feel amazing. I feel like I want to fight the top guys right off the bat. But everybody's telling me, just take your time, Chris. Yeah. Your time will come. So, I feel like, though, I, I, you know, I feel like I would still be excited regardless of what age you guys are at, though. If someone tells me that a card is going to have a 57-year-old Mike Tyson and a 54-year-old Chris Bird and a 51-year-old Ike Babucci, here, take oh. my money. Yeah, I'm in. It, it's time. We, we're in the era of of information, yeah. of health, how you can get your body back healthy, back yeah. younger. The telomeres get shorter. You feel you feel so young. You want to get out there and do it. And I think, like with Mike Tyson especially, he's feeling it. 
because he wouldn't be fighting at 57 if he wasn't yeah. feeling it. So he yeah. and, and not only feeling the feeling of just fighting, but feeling the feeling of, oh, I could be in the mix again or champion. Right. So, and that's how I feel. But I also it's feel like that, that way. I also feel like when you're in your 50s, though, man, I, I, it's almost like you bring like a different, you, you know, you bring life experience, experience to the ring and you've almost got like more things worth fighting for in your life, you know? Yes. I think it brings out more of a fight in you. You, you know I mean, because you do feel like that kind of that, that that sense of you're fighting against Father Time. You you've really got real shit in your face. Yeah, and, and see, for me, you know, I look at Father Time as like I got a new lease on life. I feel like a youngin. I yeah. treat my body real good. Yeah. But my whole thing is, I want to be the best. Like when I was at heavyweight in 2004, I was number one overall heavyweight. I want to yeah. be the number one overall middleweight. And be dominant once again. And what motivates you to want to do this, though? Like, do you feel like you still got more to prove? Uh, you know, is it battling Father Time, as you said? Uh, you, you know, is it wanting to like a, you feel like a, you feel like it changes the narrative of your legacy if you come back and, and, and you want a belt at your age? Oh, oh, definitely. I mean, the, the thing is, can I do it? Yeah. To me, it's a challenge. I'm this age. I know I'm healthy. I know I can pass physicals. But I, I truly believe that I could do it in another era, in, in, in another weight class, shock the world, and prove that I am the best in the world in boxing. One of the things that's a big hot point right now, obviously, is, uh, is, is, is you know, guys taking to Twitter or Instagram. Obviously, social media has become a big part of, of how guys trash talk and everything. You didn't have that so much around, like, your era of fighting. Uh, you, you think sometimes these guys are more a, a little more uh, comfortable just arguing and not making the big fights that we want to see. Sometimes there's a little bit more back and forth. Or, or do you like the Internet? Well, you know... The social media is good. It means good for boxing. Yeah. And, and sometimes you might be social media glory and and not, you know, have the big fights, but sometimes it makes the big fights. You yeah. got to have social media. You want to be followed. You want to be big in this sport so you can get the fights that you really want to get and, yeah. and get paid what you want to get paid. So I think it's a great thing. And I, and I think, you know, with me coming back, I think I'll bring a lot of shine to this sport. A lot of, a lot of doubt. A lot of eyes come watching. They want to see the old man. They gonna yeah. want to see me. Yeah, yeah. It's got a natural curiosity to it because everybody wants to see, you know, how you know how something that seems to go against the grain of everything, you know, how it will play out. Yes. Good, better, and different. You know, what I mean, people will want to watch. It's compelling. Yes, you know, it's very compelling. I mean, to yeah. see an old. Uh, considered old man in the sport and, and you look on TV you guys, oh, is this guy with the gray beard? Yeah. I mean, why can't it happen? Like, we, literally just, we literally just saw Ryan Garcia pull off a huge upset. Crazy things happen in boxing all the time. Yes. You're right. Great. Uh, you know, it was great upset and great for boxing. A lot of a lot of eyes watch that fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and now Ryan just suddenly stamps his own ticket. Now all of a sudden he's an A side guy that can make call, make shot uh, make uh, calls now. Yeah, on the shots. Yes, big time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and uh, uh, so, so do you have a prediction for Fury Usyk? How, how will this fight absolutely end? Will Fury knock Usyk out? I don't think so. No, uh, I think I mean not not the. Too good of you know, a fighter. He's not the knockout type guy in yeah. boxing. He he's more strategic. He uses height and reach, his defense, and he's about that. He showed that with, you know, with um, Ngannou, where Ngannou gets blown out by uh, I'm forgetting the name, but he got knocked out. So it it just tells you the difference in in, in fighting and the difference in styles. He's not about the power game. He's about the boxing game. Box, yeah. take your time, use your defense, use your height and reach to your advantage, and stay with what you know instead of trying to be a power guy because you're not a power puncher. Do you I, have I know a that as well because I wasn't at heavyweight. I wasn't a power guy, so I know my strengths. 
Now, do you have a certain time frame of which, like, maybe an age that you wouldn't fight past? Like, okay, I can come back right now for a while, but I'm not going to still be fighting past a oh, certain yeah, age. Past 60. It's okay. funny saying, it's funny saying that age because it <laughs> seems so old. Yeah, it does. But, it's but not the anymore. way I feel is totally different. It's yeah. like, wow, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, so 60. <laughs> you can still be fighting when you're 60. <laughs> yes, let's get it. I feel it crazy. It does seem crazy. It, it does seem crazy, but yet it really doesn't, though, because like nowadays, especially with all the strides that modern medicine have made, yeah, I mean, I mean, what's 60? It's like the new 40. Yes. You, yes. you know what I mean? Yes. I mean yes. crazy See, I'm not movement. talking crazy. I'm talking like a man that's on a mission to be world champion and i know people may be listening like who is this old guy talking he gonna get hurt yeah but until you see me fight until you see me what i and to see what i can do then you you'll really know and understand okay well you've got the credentials where people have to respect the fact that you know what i mean that you are a former you know uh, heavyweight champion of the world i mean that means something in an era that you did it it really meant something because i think it was a it was a much tougher heavyweight division yeah Without a yeah, doubt. But you know, people still think you know, look at him, he's too old. See, I grew the gray beard for a reason. I keep yeah. it on. I, people say cut it off. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna cut it off. I'm no, gonna I show play. them. I'm gonna show them that yes, I'm older and I can yeah. fight at this age. I don't yeah. have to cut nothing off. I want to do this. But 60 years old is a cutoff. You heard it here. You heard it here first, folks. You might see Chris Bird fighting and coming into the ring at 60 years old. Yes. I love it. I love As it. champion. Yeah, that, that would the be mind boggling. Being champion. I've been champion before. I know yeah. the feeling. I know what it takes to get to that high level. So I and I understand what these young guys bring to the table. They come and they hungry. But yeah. I'm just as hungry. I'm starving. Yeah, I like that. You you have to have that attitude. That's gotta give you your edge. You know? Yes. It has to. And what your family. And 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 is everybody in the family like on board with you still fighting? Have any of your family who I know are a big role, uh, you, you know, in your team and 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 uh, and, and in life? Have any of them come to you and said, Chris, I don't know about fighting at this age," or is everybody on board fully supportive? No, I, I had you know at first it's the look, are you because I came from chronic pain, yeah. so coming out of chronic pain, you know, right. me, are you crazy? But. Like I like I would tell them and tell everybody else. At first, they said I was too small. Now they say I'm too old. I I overcame the the smallness the first career. Now I'm gonna overcome the age in the second career, and I'm gonna prove everybody wrong that I am the one that, that you gotta get past. Yeah, I love that attitude, man. Hey, listen, Chris, I gotta say. Always a pleasure getting the chance to catch up with you, man. I'm glad we got to do this, man. Always keep me posted, please, because anytime you're doing anything, I want to be tapped in, man, and, and, and help you promote it. Yes, I will. I'll keep you posted, definitely, because yeah. I'll be off the couch. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. I'll probably be on the couch watching, Chris, but make no mistake, I will be watching anything yeah. you do. Yeah. I'm on board 100%. I appreciate you, man, as always. Great talking to you, man, and definitely stay in touch. We'll do it again, my friend. Definitely. We will. Right. Thank you for Thanks, having Chris. me. God bless you, man. Yeah. Appreciate you, my friend. And for all the fans out there, yeah. got to believe. I gotta will believe. be champ again. Chris will be champ again. I believe it wholeheartedly, champ. It's good talking to you, man. Yep. Nice talking. Okay. All talk right. Take it easy, Chris. Talk to you soon, buddy. There he goes, folks. That is the former heavyweight champion of the world, Chris Bird who, as you heard, would love to make a comeback at middleweight. So watch out middleweight division, I guess. The man is on a mission. 50-something. Get the fuck out of here. Who cares? Right, Alexis? Who cares? Chris Bird's got a can-do attitude. As he says, our great American poet, Chris Bird, let's go. Chris will get it done, man. Always a pleasure talking to him, man. Love that guy, man. And his enthusiasm, unbridled. The best. And uh, former heavyweight champ in an era where he was not the biggest heavyweight, but wildly successful, man. Uh, David amongst Goliaths, without a doubt. Thank you for tuning in. Like and follow us on Facebook. Be sure to like, subscribe, and tap in right here. Hit the notification bell, man. This is the best boxing conversations, the best chop sessions anywhere on the internet. You come here.
for all the guys in the fight game and women in the fight game. They come here for the best conversations. We're all over the map with it. Stay tuned in. And uh, remember, folks, and since Benji is not here, I will take this one. In the words of our great American poet, Gary Busey, I can go 15 seconds with anything. And from my mouth to your ears, if you want to be a champion, you got to roll with the champs.